Howdy, howdy. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Big Blue House. Anyone remember that? <laughs> um, hello and welcome to this week's video. I am your host, Grace, and this is Movie Monday. So, um, as you can probably tell by the title, we are doing The Rescuers. Um, this is the second time that we're trying a live stream as opposed to a normal sit down, record, edit, and upload. Um, we're just going to see how this goes. Um, we can talk about it near the end if we want to continue it. Um, but this is just from the first one, which was Hercules, and now we're on the rescuers. Hello, Joy, and welcome. And welcome to the other four of the people who just hopped on. Hello, Agent Sub. Um, I also, maybe I missed the memo, is Fresh Baked California going live on their Fresh Baked Presents every Monday now? Or am I just, like, going crazy? Hello, Brian. Um, because I'm trying not to, like, overlap when they're live streaming, when he's live streaming. So it's like, <laughs> I've noticed the past two weeks he was. So anyway, hopefully this 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific is okay. Hello, Paige. Hi, Steve. All right. So he did go live earlier. I catch, I caught some of it. I haven't been keeping count. Yeah. Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays on Fresh Picture Present. Thank you, Disney Girl Mel. <laughs> okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, it wasn't the main channel. It was the Fresh Baked Presents one. Okay, so I usually do, like, housekeeping things at the beginning. Oh, I just wanted to, I mean, since we're all family here, um, as you may know, I am becoming a teacher, and today was actually the first time, uh, first day of my internship. So I got to meet with the teacher. I got to see her classroom. Um, we got a tour of the school. Of course, there's no students on campus yet, but it was fun to kind of like look around, see the atmosphere, and it was a little exciting. And so now I'm full time now there. So like tomorrow, eight to four, Wednesday, eight to four, so on and so forth. Yeah. So I am teaching um, English for middle schoolers, seventh grade specifically right now. Um, we actually have English, language arts, and then reading as well. Thank you, Steve. And today is Adam Lewu's birthday. Well, happy birthday, Adam Lewu. <laughs> All right, so that's some of the housekeeping done. And those of you here just popping on, uh, this is the second live for Movie Monday. Again, we're just kind of seeing how things go. Um, at the end of this, we'll kind of talk it out and see um, if we want to continue it again for next week or if we want to go back to traditional for. Anyway, excuse my chair, it squeaks. All right, so we are doing The Rescuers, yay! And we're, of course, doing the typical movie facts, park facts, personal facts, and then we are voting for next week. Hello, Daniel. <laughs> All right, so uh, The Rescuers, uh, it premiered in 1977, and I didn't put the date on it. Nope. Okay. Usually I put the date. All right. <laughs> Didn't put the date. So, uh, I, I've noticed also I haven't been putting like a plot summary. So I'm going to start doing that now. So the rescuers is about the rescue aid society, an international mouse organization headquartered in New York city, shadowing the United Nations building dedicated to helping the abduction of victims around the world at large. So the story follows two mice, Bernard and Miss Bianca, uh, who set out to find Penny, who has been being held pr prisoner by Madame Medusa. And this was, again, just taken from Wikipedia. So that description was written by there. So the film, I did not know this, was actually based on a series of books by Marjorie Sharp, most notably The Rescuers, which she released in 1959, and then Miss Bianca, which was in 1962. Hello, Kimberly. All right, so The Rescuers was the first Disney animated film to have a sequel. After three successful theatrical releases, the original film, The Rescuers Down Under, was released theatrically on November 16th, 1990, so a few years after. Um, and then I have the plot summary of The Rescuers Down Under. It takes place in the Australian outback. And it involves Bernard and Bianca trying to rescue a boy named Cody and a giant golden eagle called, oh man, Marahoot, uh, from a greedy poacher named Percival C. McLeach. Not a fan of Down Under. I find it overrated. 
I would agree with you. Uh, many people forget it's a part of the Disney Renaissance. I agree. Um, I think the original Rescuers is better than the sequel. Um, I do think it is overrated, um, Down Under, but I can't complain too, too much because that movie is what made some of the songs available from the original soundtrack available on Spotify. So like Tomorrow's Another Day, Journey, and then the other sad song that makes me cry every time I hear it. <laughs> yes, uh, I did. I did read that. The original was described by critics as a breath of fresh air. I did see that. Um, and I think it was too, like, someone's waiting for you. Thank you. <laughs> um, first film Disney. There's the guys. Oh, cool. Um, I already lost my train of thought. Uh, yeah, Breath of Fresh Air. I mean, th this came out in 77, which was actually kind of like right after Robin Hood. <sighs> yeah. All right. Um, I have the um, actors. Hello, James. So Bob Newhart uh, played Bernard. Eva Gaber played Miss Bianca. Geraldine Page as Madame Medusa. Michelle Stacy as Penny and Jim Jordan as Orville. Now, going back to the remake, or the, excuse me, the sequel, it says uh, both Bob Newhart and Eva Gaber reprised their roles. So Bernard and Bianca were um, Duchess? I believe so. I did read that as well, I think. Um, so the, the mice both had the original voice actors. And then because Jim Jordan the one who played Orville, which is the albatross. Um, he had died when the remake was being made. They had John Candy come in to play Wilbur, which was Orville's brother, after the Wright brothers, because they were like airplanes. <laughs> Cute. Is it the same penny from Inspector Gadget? <laughs> uh, no. And I also thought about that, because I'm like, that's the same name as the owner from Bolt, Penny. Um, and I'll get into that name in just a minute with my personal facts, but yeah, not the same penny. <laughs> um, so in 1962 is actually when the film began development with its initial treatment development from the first book centering on a poet held captive by a totalitarian, tot oh my gosh, totalitarian, I can't say that, government, the overbearing government, <laughs> um, in the S Siberian like stronghold. However, um, as the story grew overtly involved with international issues, Walt Disney shelved the project as he was unhappy with the political overtones. So Walt actually kind of saw the rescuers kind of be brought onto the table. And then he was like, no political unrest. We don't want to have any controversy in my film. So he shelved it and then eventually came back up after he's, he passed. So the music for the soundtrack no politics here. Um, so the music was uh, written and composed by Carol Connors and Ann Robbins. Additionally, Connors and Robbins collaborated with the composer Sammy Fain on the song Someone's Waiting For You. I literally had it written down here. <laughs> uh, Someone's Waiting For You. Most of the songs they wrote for the film were performed by Shelby Flint. And also notably for the first time since Bambi, which was in 42, all the most significant songs were sung as part of the narrative, not like sung by the characters, uh, which I thought was interesting because I know I love Bambi too. I love how Bambi's music plays a role in like the background to kind of set the mood um, and not just like instrumental music, but singing and like um, drip, 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 little April showers, April showers. And then, um, What's the other Bambi song with words in it? <laughs> I don't remember. Um, but that's what I like about the rescuers. I mean, they do have the Rescue Aid Society. Um, but, I mean, love is a song. Thank you. Love is a song that never ends. Um, sorry, my pitch is awful. Okay. Tarzan has most songs not sung by the characters except the trash in the camp. Yeah. It, yeah. 
I'm thinking back, I'm like, I actually, in those movies, those three Bambi, Rescuers, and Tarzan, I'm kind of like, I love the music from that film. Song is literally going through my head when Bambi was mentioned. <laughs> yeah. Um, Bambi is a great film. Did I already do Bambi? Maybe I'll do it next. Just kidding. I have a theme. I have a theme for next week. Okay. So music was great. So for the rescuers, during the film's initial theatrical run, the film was released as a double feature with a live action nature documentary film called A Tale of Two Critters. The wimpy deer. Bimby is not wimpy. Um, on December 16th, eight, 1983, the rescuers, rescuers were re-released to the theaters accompanied with the new Mickey Mouse featurette, which was Mickey's Christmas Carol, which I also love to watch every year, um, which marked the characters, that being like Mickey and Donald and them, first theatrical appearance after 30 years absence. Oh, Ceylon's reference. I have seen Ceylon maybe once. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> um... Yeah, did everyone else know that the film was originally released as a double feature with a live-action nature documentary? <laughs> did not know that. All right, so that is actually going to do it for my um, my movie facts there. So any movie facts that you want to throw in right now that we're thinking about it? See, no one else need, like. Double features, man. I literally watched the Nature Documentary this year. Was it good, Brian? Is it on Disney Plus? I've never even heard of it. A Tale of Two Critters. Interesting. The more you know. We're too young for that. Yeah, I know. 77? Yikes. It was okay. And yes, it's on Disney Plus. Okay. Maybe I'll check it out. Does everyone else like the Chris, uh, Mickey's Christmas Carol as much as I do? <laughs> With Ebenezer Scrooge Duck. You were four. <laughs> nice. I believe you can meet Bernard and Megan Tuckett. Yes. So I'll just like hop on that park fact here. So I said, sometimes can be spotted during special events here at Walt Disney World. Um, and then they are mostly seen in Paris and in Tokyo. I, I love the Muppets Christmas Carol as well. I've only seen that a few times though. So maybe like my nostalgia is still with the Mickey's Christmas Carol. You can meet them in Tokyo. Yes, you can. And Dean, you liked the Christmas Carol. That was a fun movie. Yeah. It's great, great little short movie. They have that. I'm just thinking now because I'm thinking about Christmas Carol. Mickey's Christmas Carol. They have those window, like, art. What do you call them? Like, with the little, where they have the the moving statues of the Christmas Carol with Scrooge Duck. I've seen both Christmas Carols once. Yeah. Maybe this year you'll watch it again. <laughs> I know I will. I watch all of those, like, over and over again. The Christmas Carol one, Mickey's Christmas Carol. I haven't seen them up. It's maybe I'll watch it again this Main Street Windows. I knew there was a term for them. Thank you. Um, so I watched that one and then I watched Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas and Mickey's Twice Upon a Christmas every time. Focus Grace, I know. Recent Christmas Carol was the Jim Carrey one. Greg, howdy. Have a blessed night. Thank you, Greg. I appreciate the $10 donation. I greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. Movie fact. The animators for the rest were got a hot water from, yeah, the X-rated imagery stuck in the back. I did see that. You made it. Yes, thank you. Hello. Um, yeah, I didn't include that in here just because, you know, monetization. <laughs> but they did have a little slip up in like the original uh, movie that was released. They had, as um, Orville was flying Bernard and Bianca through the city, one passing scene you could see into a window that was not very... Um, Disney appropriate image. All right, you can look that up on your own time. <laughs> um, so for my personal facts, so I kind of just bullet pointed it here. I said, it is one of my favorite Disney films of all time. True. 
um, I said it is super underrated, especially compared to Down Under, which came out in 90, 1990. I don't know. There was a lot, there was a lot more stuff going on in 1990, in the 90s for Disney. So I don't know why they're so focused on Down Under. Um, so the name Penny, because I used to watch the rescuers over and over and over again as a wee lass, I fell in love with the name Penny and I named everything Penny. I had like my little stuffed dog I named Penny, my like imaginary friend, I know I'm wacko, I named Penny. Um, I love the name Penny. It said on YouTube, the rescuers came out in the 90s and the original was 77. Fixed your release. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Didn't Down Under use a new animation title? Yeah, they did. You have a you have a very good point. They did use a new animation technology in the film, which was kind of like, oh. I mean, yeah. I guess I guess if you look at it that way, like technological filmmaking animation, it was like the greatest pioneer of its time. So I get that. But plot wise. Who, who is your friend that likes to play Penny, Penny? Oh, bing bong, bing bong. I just watched that movie the other day. I cry every time. Um, so yeah, I love the name Penny. And as I was rewatching the film for this, Evan Rude. My grandma loved Evan Rude. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I love that scene where he's like trying to take them super fast through the bog or the swamp and he's like Bzzz, and he starts to get tired and he goes <laughs> so cute. For those of you who don't know, Evan Root is the dragonfly from The Rescuers and he is so, such a hard-working dragonfly. Wasn't the girl in Oliver named Penny? Is it? Because Oliver and Company is on this list. How funny. Um, for my for next week um yeah so as I was re-watching the film uh for this segment here I I remembered looking watching it back and I'm like I always wanted to be like Miss Bianca like very prissy and everyone was looking at me and I was very kind and sweet and gentle but like heroic and and caring but then as I'm re-watching this I'm like man I'm more like Bernard like kind of scared and timid of like going out and clumsy <laughs> like as he's trying to get the message out of the bottle right at the beginning of the film he like climbs the ladder and he's like this ladder has 13 steps it's like well just skip the last one <laughs> so you want to climb up 13 rungs and then when he got in he didn't want to like he tried to get it out and he slipped back down and then he's stuck in the bottle he's just so clumsy I love it um I'm missing some I'm missing some is Penny a typical Disney name? It's used in Rescuers, Inspector Gadget, and Bolt. Yeah. Oliver and Company was Jenny. Oh, close. <laughs> Miss Bianca's the best. Laugh emojis. I loved Eva Gaver's voice in Disney and Green Acres. Yeah. Great. I mean, she has a wonderful voice. It's so, like, gentle and soft. I love it. But, yeah, I'm definitely more like Bernard. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of Orville. And trying to propose, but I can't find a way to do it in the sequel oh trying to do it on purpose yeah, yeah yeah oh trying to propose I got it I got it I don't know why I couldn't read um yeah that was so cute I remember like I was so young I didn't like understand the concept of like proposing and asking someone to marry you so like they're in this fancy restaurant and they're like eating on top of a, a thumb thimble and he's like so nervous to propose and I'm like just show her the ring but now I understand like he just he loved her so much and just wanted it to be perfect and like it fell and <laughs> it landed on right it landed on someone's like foot and then it was like bouncing up and down and he had to crawl under and like take the ring out it was so funny Bernard and Bianca were an adorable, adorable couple yes I agree they are so cute you know okay I'm just gonna throw this opinion out there and a lot of people are gonna like come at me for this but I think Bernard and Bianca are kind of like Donald and Daisy just in in the way that they're like real like they have a lot more exaggerated traits and they have 
like opinions and things like Donald gets angry and Daisy is like you know she's in charge of everything she wants things to go the right way she takes care of the boys um and kind of like Mickey and Minnie are just kind of like you know perfect happy-go-lucky couple so like when I see people are like oh Mickey and Minnie they're so cute I'm like yeah but I kind of like Donald and Daisy and now that I'm thinking about it I like Bernard and Bianca <laughs> And I'm sure there's a lot of other, like, Disney couples. Like, um, the the man and woman from 101 Dalmatians. Those people. I like them. Okay. Um, oh, and then the most important kind of deep down rooted thing that this movie has done for me. Oh, and Goofy and Clarabelle. Yes. <laughs> um, so the rescuers, and this is going to get way deep. So I'll try to go just, like, surface. Um, this movie along with Meet the Robinsons, are the reasons that I want to adopt and not have kids of my own. Yeah. Marvel, yeah. But isn't that crazy? Like, I'm sure, like, somewhere deep down, I've always, like, known I wanted to adopt and not have a child. But, like, now that I'm looking back, I'm like, maybe it was because I love these movies. <laughs> nah, mate. Um... But yeah, I, is that crazy? Because I'm just thinking about these people, these kids who are in the orphanage that don't have a stable home, even in like foster care, that's a whole other thing. But Penny from The Rescuers, Roger and Anita, thank you. I Somewhere in my brain it was there, thank you. <laughs> um... Yeah, isn't that bonkers? Anyway. <laughs> All right, so I have eight minutes left, so that gives me just enough time to, excuse me, to go over the theme for next week. So this week was the 70s, and y'all chose the rescuers. So now we're doing dog week, um, because as you guys know, I did just get a new dog, and I was just petting his little belly today, and I was like, you know what? Let's do dog week on Fresh Baked. So, your choices for Movie Monday for next week. We have 101 Dalmatians with Roger and Anita. <laughs> um, Bolt with Penny. Um, we have Lady and the Tramp, the original version, not the live action version. Fox and the Hound. <laughs> and Oliver and Company. I didn't I didn't think about adding Lilo and Stitch. But yes, that, that makes sense. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll do a... Maybe I'll do another pet one next week but right now we're doing dogs so again 101 dalmatians bolt lady and the tramp the original fox and the hound and oliver and company and i already saw one vote for lady and the tramp fox and the hound despite the fact that it makes me cry yes goodbye may seem like forever or goodbye why am i so bad at remembering names today that song the goodbye may seem like forever song oh Lady and the Tramp. Oh, dang. Oliver and Company or Lady and the Tramp. Decisions, decisions. You got to make one. You got to make one. <laughs> Bolt because it's underrated. Vote Lady and the Tramp. Oliver and Company. Oh, man. This is going to be a close one. And then remember, those of you who are still or who are not watching this live, you still can vote down in the comments. And I know I usually um, tell you guys that you have until Thursday to vote. Now I'm just, I mean, because I'm working full time, I'm checking it um like Sunday afternoon so you really have and basically until I f do this live stream <laughs> all right so I'm gonna go through one more time just so I have a head count of everyone we have Lady and the Tramp Fox and the Hound uh Bolt Lady and the Tramp Oliver and Company Oliver and Company because my oldest is named Oliver yeah, that's an awesome reason <laughs> okay I don't know why this hair is doing this, but I'm so sorry that I keep trying to brush it away. Okay, so now we're down to about five minutes. So I would like to have just a quick discussion. <laughs> Oliver and Company, Lady and the Tramp. Okay, <laughs> got it. Um, do you guys like this live format? Or would you rather me go back to the traditional sit down, edit, 
with the little photos next to me. I guess now maybe I'll post it over here because it's just like a blue wall. I have not watched Howard. I've heard good things. I'll watch it this week. I'll have time. Do you like the distractions? I do. I like interacting with you. I like hearing you guys, your opinions right off the bat. I don't have to like sit here. Plus it's honestly, it's much easier for me to do a live stream because it's just sit down for 30 minutes and then I'm done. Like, whereas, you know, I write the script, I film for like 30 minutes cause I keep messing up and I need 10 minutes of content. And then I go downstairs, I have to wait for all my videos to upload from my phone to my computer and then I have to edit it and then I have to go and google search the images and drag the images on the thing and then <laughs> I sound like I'm <laughs> I'm complaining I mean it it's whatever content you guys like honestly it depends on how much time you have since I am working full time well that's a good point actually let me add to that I came in later work but I'm loving this okay um that's a good point. I am just now, you like this format. Okay. I am just now starting my full-time position. Like today was the first day. So I could in theory, just do another live next Monday. So that way I kind of see how much time I actually do have in the evenings now. Um, so yeah, let's say, let's say this dog week is another live for, for certain. Girl, you just explained the process of editing perfectly. That describes my job in a nutshell. Yeah, I could not, I could not edit full time. I mean, I, I like and enjoy doing it for you guys because I know you appreciate and watch it. Um, but like if I had to do it in hopes that someone was going to watch it, I'm kind of like, mm. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what we'll do. This dog week, this next dog week will be this live again. And then we'll go from there. I know I said that every week. All right, so um, I already have everyone who already voted. I'm just going to read the list out one more time for those who are still voting or thinking. So next week, your options are 101 Dalmatians, Bolt, Lady and the Tramp, Fox and the Hound, and Oliver and Company. Dog week, because I got a new dog. That's why. His name is Garth. I want a dog like George of the Jungle. <laughs> During dog week, can we get a cameo from your dog? I was thinking about that. Um, I think by next week he'll be calm enough to be able to come in here for a minute, kind of like hop up on me and you can see it and then he'll probably knock the tripod over and then you see my room and everything. But um, yeah, we'll try for Garth to make a little appearance next week for dog week. Fox and Hound, got your vote. Garth, I know, like Garth Brooks. He was a rescue, um, or he is a rescue. So he was already named when we got him. And apparently when he was first rescued by the society that had him, they thought his name might've been Leo, um, thinking that he was born in July, I guess. Um, but he never responded to Leo. So then his foster parents, who we got him from, called him Garth because I guess her mother liked Garth Brooks and he responds to it. So his name is Garth. <laughs> We're not worthy. We're not worthy. <laughs> Wait, yeah. Fun times. All right, so uh, we're in this last minute here. So I just want to thank everyone who was here. Thank you for all the likes. I see that we actually have more likes than viewers because I know people leave. So thank you for that. Thank you for liking and engaging in this video. Thank you again, Greg, for the $10 donation. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Um, we will be on next week, same time, same place for dog week. Um, stay tuned. And I hope you all have a good rest of your week. I know I'm going to be a little bit busy. I'm going to try to post more on Instagram. I know I'm really bad because I don't have any new pictures of Disney. So I just have a bunch of me as a little child there. So <laughs> um, hopefully, guys, if you follow me on Instagram, you're going to get a lot of throwback videos or photos. Thank you again for all of um, your engagement. Good night. Um, be safe. Be kind. Wear a mask. Um, throwback Thursdays. I'm thinking about it. Just doing Thursdays. Um, so yeah, uh, be smart, be, be happy, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye, Fish Baked.